All right. Thanks, everybody. It's a nice, warm round of applause. Uh, thanks for joining Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. Olivia Taylor Dudley has been knocking fan socks off for three seasons on Sci-Fi's The Magicians. She played Nif Alice, regular Alice, and last week we saw her electrocuting all the members of her family. Let's take a look at a clip from The Magicians airing tonight on Sci-Fi. How old is this one? Moses is eight months. It's too old. Mm, what about? First, I need to know whether you have fully accepted Jesus as your savior. Pardon? What about this one? Hester is five months. I'll take her. I do need you to swear to me that you'll protect this animal and Hester shall see no evil. Everybody, please welcome Olivia Taylor Dudley. Hi. Hi. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. You look amazing. I love oh, your you. pants. Oh, thanks. I love gold. Uh, clearly, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's talk about this season of The Magicians. And uh, well, let's talk about that scene. You are getting a cat. I am. Uh, cats play kind of a big role this season. Um, as do bunnies. Uh, yeah, the, but what's going to happen to that cat? It's a little dark. Um, the cats explode this season. When I get too close to um, a really scary creature that I'm running from, if I get too close to it, a cat explodes. And that's it's how I know. It's hilariously gruesome when it they is. do explode. Yeah, not, and no animals were actually harmed in the making of this. No real cats explode. Uh, but I spent a lot of time running around this season with like a cat carrier with a stuffed animal cat in it. Well, good, because you're also allergic to cats, right? Yeah, I found out while shooting this season I'm allergic to cats and rabbits. So how do you handle a scene like that when you're allergic? Uh, a lot of Zyrtec. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talk to me what you thought when you first auditioned for The Magicians, what you thought the show was going to be. I was really excited when I saw the script come across my desk. I mean, I'm a huge magic nerd, and I actually hadn't heard of the book series yet, but when, when it came across, I flipped out. I called my agents, and I was like, I really want to get in on this. And I actually originally read for Julia, who Stella Maeve plays, and I didn't really quite connect with the character, and we all agreed, let's have her read for Alice. So then I came in with Alice, and I knew who she was right away. And it's really exciting when you read a character that you don't have to think that much about how to play them. I just knew right away how I wanted to play her, and read the books, sped through them, and got the job and I was super excited. When did you become a magic nerd? I always have been. My grandmother, um, I grew up on a ranch in Northern California and my grandmother was there and she's like a really crazy, like witchy magician type herself. Call so her a witchy woman? I would call her a witchy woman. Um, and she kind of raised me to believe in all that kind of crazy stuff. Like we used to be UFO hunters together and we used to do seances and, and oh, pretend they had magic. Like it was a real thing. Um, yeah. That's so cool. So when so you're doing seances and UFO hunting with your grandmother, did you guys ever, did the two of you ever see anything? Was there anything spooky ever happen? Always. I don't know, man. She was really good at playing with my um, imagination, though. But yeah. Um, did you like Ouija couple, board? And yeah, I had a lot. I actually have a couple of custom-made Ouija boards. I love Ouija boards. Really? I don't mess with them, though, because I don't want to, I don't want to mess with them. <laughs> I see, I believe too much, so... <laughs> Yeah. Well, ghosts, they kind of haunt us, but you have to let them do it on their terms. And Ouija boards, you know, I think according to the lore, like, it pulls them out. Yeah, not necessarily you're kind of asking they... for it. I mean, I just go by the exorcist. And, you know, at the beginning of the exorcist, she pulls the, she pulls the guy out, and that's potentially what causes the exorcist. That was one of my favorite movies. It was actually one of the first movies I ever saw when I was little, and I shouldn't have been watching it. Same. But, yeah, I saw her in that movie, and I was like, I want to do that believe it or not. <laughs> what part of that did you want to do? I was just, I, it was the first time I'd ever seen somebody become somebody else completely from the beginning to the end of the film. And I was like, it was the first time my acting ever registered. It wasn't something where your parents had to be like, no, you cannot spin your head all yeah. the way around. It's not something you can <laughs> They didn't know I was watching it. Yeah. How old were you when you saw it? Five. Wow, that's younger. I was 12 when I saw it and it scared the shit out yeah. of me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Still my favorite. <laughs> wow. So you get the you 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 get on the show. Now one of the things that I find so surprising about this show is how f fun and self-aware and funny it is. It's not like a kind of serious show about serious ma magicians playing tricks on each other and like 
getting into, I mean, there is drama in it, but it, there is also a lot of comedy. It seems like the writers have a lot of fun with you guys. Yeah, we got really lucky on this show. I mean, Lev Grossman wrote some amazing books that have so much humor and levity to them. And I think the writers and our showrunners have done a beautiful job of bringing that to the screen. And, and I, it's a show called The Magicians, but really it's about this human being's life. And it's about what it's like to be 20 something and grow up and have relationships and breakups and all the things that we all are dealing with. And magic just kind of sprinkled in. So there's a lot of humor in that because you need humor to get through the dark times. And, and they do such a beautiful job of balancing all of that in one episode. You know, we deal with a lot of really real issues like sexual assault and, and, and things like that on the show, but they do it in a way that's very accessible and, and very human. Well, I think about uh, last week's episode alone, you know, when, when Alice is with her family and her, fa her, her mother is like a former magician herself, right? Yeah, she grew yeah. up in a magic family and her parents are both magicians. Her parents are both magicians, but they are actually, they're, they're, they're great characters as well. Her mother is clearly boozing it a little bit and is a bit Bit depressed and her father is kind of absent-minded usually and I think in TV shows you get kind of like these are the magician parents and that's really all they are left to be well with this there's more idiosyncrasies involved yeah it's it's way more real I mean it's totally blown out of proportions that we're doing magic but it's it's based on I think when people watch the show People have parents that are like that and can relate to what it's like to have insane parents who are completely disconnected from reality and has nothing to do with them being magicians. That's just like a, a piece of it. But yeah, my parents on the show are fantastic. They're crazy. <laughs> you can always tell a, a sort of a, a good show from just a show, which is you can feel the writers giving one more layer. You know, let's give this character one more thing to do. Make them, give them one more layer of humanity so that it's either a little bit funnier, a little bit richer yeah. and a little more fun to watch and engaging. They've given me like, I think I've played 20 different versions of Alice. Like every season I've gotten to layer upon layer upon layer, become a different character with this person. And that's been really fun for me as an actor. What version of Alice do you think you, would you say you are right now? Um, <clears throat> she's kind of, you know, she, ooh, where is Alice right now? I don't know. She was a sweet girl. Then she died. Then she came back. She became a Niffin. She found all the power in the world and that got stripped away. Then there was no magic. Now she's just kind of going through a quarter life crisis. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me about playing, did you prefer playing uh, Niff and Alice versus regular Alice? Yes, I loved playing Niff and Alice. It was, it was a version of Alice where she had pure magic and could do anything that she wanted, but she was trapped in Quentin's mind. So she couldn't go off into the universe and be all she could be. So she was kind of stuck here. So I got to play um, her basically torturing Jason Ralph, my co-star, the entire season. Uh, last week's episode, you were wrapped in plastic wrap. Yeah. How was that? It's brutal. <laughs> Is that hot? Yeah, it was I really hot. I feel like hot. that gets, because it, tra it traps warmth, right? Yeah, it's, it was a sauna, and it was, we had to do that for <laughs> several days in a row. They, they literally just took plastic wrap and wrapped it around every square inch of my body, and then I had to run around screaming and yelling for hours on end, and... Yeah, I was so sweaty and disgusting by the end of that day. It, I, actually, I have some pretty great photos I need to post, Jason, Ralph, and I, where we went into the air conditioner unit. Like, we have on set, you have, like, these big tubes that blow air in, and we just weren't getting enough cold air, so we crawled inside of it. In, like, For those who haven't seen cold. it, there are some great pictures on your Twitter of you in this plastic wrap <laughs> yeah. as well, sort of posing and literally head to toe in plastic I was losing wrap. my mind. <laughs> are you... Um, well, oh, actually, also on your Twitter, one thing I saw is you have this uh, a great link to an article about Call Me By Your Name, which apparently you love that movie as much yes. as... I'm obsessed with that movie. Yeah. It's, it's Why my is that? Favorite. Oh, I just think it is a beautiful love story. It's really nice to see a movie, something out there right now that is just genuine and real and about love. And, and, and it was, I don't know, it's just such a beautiful movie. I agree. A hundred percent. Yeah. I tell everybody to see it. Did you have a, did you have the same, I had an experience where I went and saw it and people started, no spoilers, started leaving during the credit sequence as if it was a regular credit sequence. And I was kind of like, guys, this is the most amazing part of this movie. How could you walk out right yeah, now? It's like and people were just like, movie's points. over. I didn't know. I almost stood up and started yelling at everybody really? in the theater. I was so I was, <laughs> I was so upset. crying the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, you are a producer as well. You're in the midst of producing a, a, a pretty big project right now. You've produced some other projects before. Are they similar to The Magicians? Are you m producing fantasy kind of movies, or do you um, have a different 
passion in regards to what kind of uh, work you want to do? All different things. In the past, I've, I've done, I've produced some small movies, some horror films, and, and this one I'm doing right now, Canary, just got announced. We just got financing. I'm very excited about it. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, so I go straight into working on that. I, it's really fun to be able to be on all different sides of the project. Um, I love filmmaking. It's what I've always wanted to do. So, you know, acting is wonderful, but it's nice when I get to, you know, be a part of the whole thing. Is Canary a horror film as well? Or? I don't know how to, what genre it is, but yeah, I don't know. It's a love story that goes south. It goes south, yeah. <laughs> so the last films that you've made, you said you've produced a couple horror films. Are you uh, a big horror and, and sci-fi person? Well, Outside I, of your love for Call Me By Your Name. Yeah, um... I don't know. I've just done quite a few horror films in the beginning of my career, and, and I had a web series called Five Second Films for many years, and we did um, we did a, a movie two years ago called Dude Bro Party Massacre 3, which was like a ridiculous comedy horror, and um, that was really fun to make. But no, I mean, I don't really plan on making horror movies. Do you have a, a wealth of knowledge about like 80s horror movies and, and campy horror? Uh, yeah, I mean, I used to. I Dude haven't Bro, watched Dude, it in a while. Dude Bro Party Massacre 3 is a slumber party massacre reference I yeah, would imagine that's as well where we as took like sleepaway film. camp totally but we kind of flipped it on its head and made I play the killer in the in the film Motherface instead of Leatherface and go around killing all these dude bros who are a bunch of a-holes Motherface <laughs> is, a, 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 is it a reference in any way to like the first Friday the 13th where Jason's you know mother yeah. is the killer yeah it kind of has that kind of mythology throughout what's your favorite 80s horror movie Oh, I don't know. Let's do this. No. I, I, got, I got some. <laughs> What's yours? Ah, uh, no. You first. No, I, I honestly don't know. I love the Sleepaway Camp movies. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, Wildly offensive now. Yeah, totally. Like, would not Probably work. people should not watch them anymore. Yeah. If you are not able to sort of like divide your brain into like what's appropriate now versus what was happening then, yeah. what people thought then, do not watch yeah. <laughs> Sleepaway Camp. Yeah. But I love like classics, like I love Suspiria, like Poltergeist. I mean, I love the classics. You know who's ones. remaking Suspiria right now? Yes, that's being made. Is it? Be, are they making it? I right think now? they finished it. Yeah, they finished it. Luca Guada Guada I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> Very excited by your name. about that. Yes. Yeah, I'm. I can't wait. And David Gordon Green is redoing is doing Halloween as well. No, oh, I'm so excited about that too. I love the Carpenter films when it comes to the horror movies. Like I love Halloween and uh, even the stuff that isn't horror, like Assault on Precinct Thirteen. He's yeah. pretty. That are pretty amazing. But the eighties have that. No, it's so hard to strike that balance of like these people were kind of taking this seriously, yet there's nothing serious about what you're making. Like the Sleepaway Camp movies. Okay. That's and, why it was easy to make a film kind of making fun of that. Was it fun? Was it just like nonstop gore? Yeah. Oh, it's ridiculous gore. Like the reddest blood we could find. I'm running around with a with a mask on the entire time, just like, oh, I don't, it was ridiculous. <laughs> So you like? You I feel like I run around like a crazy person on set a lot, just chasing people. I'm always doing that. I kind of play the crazy people, the crazy people all the time. Where does that? Where do you think that comes from? I don't know. You seem fairly I'm normal. Homeschooled. Maybe that has something to do with it. <laughs> that homeschooledness in you is like, oh, she's. There's something behind the eyes there, guys. I'm we got to tap into this. Yeah, I'm just more attracted to ter to characters that have a lot of pe peculiar layers, I guess. What's been the toughest thing you've had to do with, with Alice? Hmm. Well, honestly, with Alice in the first season, when we find her, she's very, and still is, she's very shut down, and everything's very internal for her. So I've always played these live wire characters where everything's on my sleeve, and I'm out there. And with her, I had to be very, I had to like hold back the entire first season, which was difficult for me, but a really fun exercise as an actor. And I got to build so many really deep layers with her. So yeah, I mean, but it's been fun to kind of let loose with her the last two seasons. They kind of opened it up after yeah. the first season. They were like, we see what you want to do. When she gonna... died and came back, I got to be somebody new. What is that like? When you first got the script that you died, do you, were, were you aware that you were going to be coming back right away? No, I mean, when I signed on to the project, I knew that Alice... Um, dies in the, sec in the at the end of the first book. And so that was a discussion we had right away when I first started meeting on the project. I was like, am I going to disappear for three seasons? But they promised me that they'd find a way to, to write it in. And, and John McNamara and Sarah Gamble, my showrunners, had, did an amazing job of killing her off and yet keeping her on the show, which is a fun thing that you get to do on a fantasy show. You kind of get to do whatever you want. Yeah, you um, can break, you you can can break, break all the rules. rules. Yeah, but they're really good about keeping the rules and reality in it. But... Um, you still get to get away with a lot on a show about magic. I, so I got to ask, you know, you you uh, you started producing and you've produced some stuff with uh, Five Second Films and Dude Pro, 
Dude Pro Dude Bro Party, Dude Bro Massacre, Party Massacre 3. 3. Thank yeah. you. I kept saying pro, but I knew it was bro. Excuse me. <laughs> um, what is producing like for you? What what side of producing do you like doing the most, and what got you doing that? I mean, honestly, I I, I haven't done a lot of it, and it's something I'm I'm trying to do a lot more now. And I don't know. I just love filmmaking. I, I I've worked in all areas of production in my career, and I, I write, and I. I I just live being a part of the process. I, I will never not find filmmaking romantic. So I find producing to be fun to talk about all the different ideas and the different people we could hire and different places we could film it. And it's just a different side of things, yeah. Right. I hope I get to do more. Do you enjoy that more than being in front of the camera? Or do you find yourself growing to enjoy that more? Um, no, I love acting. I, it's always going to be my number one, but I, you know, I'd love you're to. So limited on like uh, control when you're in front of the in front of the camera. You can only control this like one thing, and even then, you can barely control it because there's directors and editors and everything. Yeah, else. but that's the fun part about acting. I mean, we do have control between action and cut, and and it's fun to have restraints and what. You know, I love working with directors and writers and, and figuring out everything uh, on the page. I don't know. I, lo I love the process of acting more than anything, but I think it would be really fun to move into directing and producing more. Directing, too? Yeah, that would be fun. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, let's get some questions from our audience. Who has a question? Someone's cruising up right here. Hi. Hi. Hi, I like your dress. Thank you. I like your pants. Oh, thanks. Um, you've described that you relate to Alice because she's shy and she's introverted. And so are you. And my question is, what's it like to be in Hollywood spotlight um, as an introvert and kind of like have all this attention as you gain momentum and fame? <laughs> Once you ask me that, I like crawl into a hole. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not an extrovert. And this is an, an exercise. And <laughs> is this good for me when I go out? And I'm getting better you're at good. it. You're yeah, doing thanks, great. Thanks, you're thanks. doing very great. No, I love it. It's, it's fun when you have a show you love to promote. But... Um, yeah, I don't know. It's been interesting. The fans are so wonderful on our show, and they're so supportive that they have really gotten me out of my shell because they tell us these amazing stories when we go to like the Comic Cons and all these events and how personal the show is to them. So it's really become more about the fans for me and getting out there and talking to them that it's less about me and it makes it easier to forget about, you know, myself. When did that first happen for you, when you realized that it wasn't about you, that there was this group of fans that... The first Comic-Con we had, I mean, we had a built-in audience, you know, with the book series. There was a lot of fans of the books and, and the Harry Potter fans. I mean, they need something to do now. So we, we, <laughs> so we kind of had them right away. I mean, not that they were ready to take us in, but, you know, we won them over, which is really great. But, you know, when you're on a genre show like this, there's, there's already a built-in audience of fandom that is really fun to tap into. And, yeah, it's fantastic. Next question. Hi, how's it going? Hey. I was on like a few fans to get on a boat, on a magician's boat party. My question is, when is the next one happening? The next boat party? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, last time we were here, we had a big boat party after Comic-Con. Um, I don't know. I hope not soon. I get seasick. Um, so that was a bit rough, but it was good. Yeah, no, they, they do so much fun stuff with the marketing on the show. Like, I was traveling around with rabbits last week because we have a bunch of bunnies on the show. But, yeah, I don't know. I'll ask them. Another boat party. Yeah, it was really fun. It was really fun to get to, to party with you guys. I think we have time for one more question. Hi. Hi. Um, so I also have a custom-made Ouija board, too, and I don't want to touch it either. Yeah. <laughs> but um, my question is, what kind of magic are you more compelled by, like more like Harry Potter, like fantasy magic, or more like street magic, like David Blaine kind of stuff? Oh, definitely Harry Potter magic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anything that has the potential for like a unicorn or a dragon, and I don't think street magic has that. More unicorns and dragons, less three-card Monty. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we learned a lot of sleight hand magic in season one. They brought a, several magicians up and to Vancouver where we shoot and um, taught us some card tricks and stuff. But uh, none of our we don't ever do it on the show, so I've completely forgotten. I can barely shuffle. So. Uh, before I let you go, I, I do. Did you and your grandmother ever see a UFO? Yes. Most definitely. Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I was. Obs I wanted to be an alien hunter so bad, when, or, or you know, like. You can still be that. It's not I something know. that requires much. I actually much. reached. I, just... I have a dog named Seti, who I named after the Seti Institute, and actually they got in contact with me on Twitter and they invited me out. So, um, hopefully that can be a second career. Have you ever seen the movie Fire in the Sky? No. Oh really? Yeah. It's like the alien abduction movie from the '90s that. Uh, where D.B. Sweeney gets probed. Ooh, yeah. I'll check it out. My, my, my go-to memory, because I saw that when I was a little kid and it scared the hell out of me. Yeah. Um, but so wait, what did it look like when you saw an alien? 
No, I mean, I don't want to go into details. A UFO. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, just things in the sky. We saw a lot of really crazy lights out in the middle of our ranch, in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I could have been imagining all of it, but I believe that I saw some things. I believe it, too. But I, I have a very vivid imagination. That's why I love this job. Uh, the Magicians is on Sci-Fi uh, Wednesday nights, right? What time? Um, nine, eight central. Nine, eight central. Tonight, and yeah. it's on tonight. Uh, as you saw, she bought a cat. Maybe it explodes. I'm not sure if that's tonight or another episode. Everybody give a round of applause for Olivia Taylor Dudley. Let's hear it. Thank you.